The Japanese armies continued driving south, crushing Western colonial forces in their path. They occupied French Indochina and took the British bastion of Singapore. At the end of February 1942, their invasion fleet appeared off the coast of Java. Eight days later, the Dutch surrendered all of Indonesia. Seeing their masters humiliated, Indonesians rejoiced. After 300 years of Dutch invincibility, it truly seemed that a miracle had happened. The Indonesians lined up the streets and cheered the Japanese troops who came marching into Jakarta after the defeat of the Dutch army. I was saying, waving to them, you know, oh, shouting them, banzai, you know, very happy, you know, that now the Dutch were gone from Indonesia. The Japanese proclaimed Indonesia free from colonialism, and they promised a glorious future in what Japan called the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. They said it is Asia for the Asians. It's part of the nationalism, yeah? And so Sukarno and other leaders believed at the beginning they come to help us. But you have the same problem after that. After they have been here one year maybe or more, then they are colonizers. Indonesians soon found themselves laboring for Japan as they had formerly labored for the Dutch. A member of the Japanese Occupation Command remembers. Materials. Raw materials. Japan was only interested in the raw materials. Foremost was oil, then there was tin, bauxite, rubber. All those things that we did not have but needed. Japanese policy was to take advantage of people like Sukarno and to give them some form of leadership. Sukarno was grateful to the Japanese for having gotten rid of the Dutch, but he also doubted if Japan would ever deliver on its promises of independence. Even with these doubts, he felt he had to get as much as he could from the Japanese. Sukarno took a dangerous course. He became a propagandist for the Japanese and tried to use the pulpit Japan gave him to carry on his campaign for Indonesian unity and independence. But Sukarno's pact with the Japanese proved to be a devil's bargain, as the Japanese began to demand more than rhetoric. The Japanese needed more manpower. They ordered Sukarno to lure Indonesian men into work battalions. The Japanese called them Romusha. Sukarno told them they were heroes of labor. The Romusha were shipped off to forced labor throughout the Japanese Empire, where they died by the thousands. After the war, I met two young Indonesians who were formerly 
belong to this uh, contract coolies or Romusa of the Japanese army. And they look like some guys who, which, who came out from Belsen camp, you know, the Nazi camp in Germany. Because they told us we were like this, we were sick. If everybody who was sick will not be given food by the Japanese, no medicines. Only if you continue to work, then they will give you some medicine and some food. Otherwise, they will not give you anything at all. The suffering of the Romusha still haunts the memory of Sukarno's role in Indonesian history. By the end of 1944, American forces had shattered Japan's defenses in the Pacific, and American bombers were pounding Japanese cities. The Japanese needed Indonesians' resources and cooperation more than ever. The Japanese reconsidered Sukarno's pleas. Facing defeat, a desperate Japan promised Indonesia its independence in return for Indonesia's continued support of the Japanese war effort. An elated Sukarno swore that Indonesia and Japan would fight together to the end. And he won a crucial concession from the Japanese. The Japanese agreed to give Indonesians arms and training to help them repel an Allied invasion. But Sukarno had a hidden agenda. He wanted an army to fight the Dutch if Japan lost the war. We know that the Japanese were loose. Why not to take that opportunity to get the military ready? So there's not a question of collaboration. The Dutch has left us, you know, unarmed and uneducated into the hands of the Japanese. So what, what is wrong to have our own tactics? But the war would end sooner than anyone imagined. August 6, 1945, an American atomic bomb killed 100,000 people in the Japanese city of Hiroshima. On August 9th at Nagasaki, a second atomic bomb killed 35,000 people. On August 15th, Japan surrendered. At first, Sukarno could not believe that two bombs had destroyed the mighty Japanese empire. Now there was very little time to negotiate independence from the Japanese. They all knew that if the Dutch came back, independence was dead. A few days after the war ended, Sukarno went up to many Japanese and honestly felt sorry for their loss. And I don't believe his tears were an act. On August 17th, at the home of a sympathetic Japanese admiral, Sukarno and fellow nationalist Mohamed Hatta declared Indonesia an independent nation. They raised a homemade red and white flag on a bamboo pole the little group gathered around the flagpole and sang the new country's national anthem. For the time being, Indonesia was free. <laughs> 